Go ahead, Dad. Hi, everybody. Welcome to another question and answer. Thank you for coming. YouTube watching this. And before I start, I just want to go over a couple of things that we're going to be doing today. Um, I think last week, and I think I um, I wasn't even anywhere close to starting these actually, and I have started. And I was showing you how I was going to place the fabric, which I have. And, and if we get to it, I want to show you a lot about that. And if we start upholstering the outsides and, and give you a couple of tips on that. But before we get to that, the other thing that's exciting is we're going to be calling Jimmy um, and see how he's doing in all this. And um, we're just... Uh, one sec, I don't want to pause. What? The, the mic's running out of batteries. I keep cutting it out. We're having some technical difficulties, so well, you guys might be hearing me come in and out, out but um, actually. Battery. <laughs> <laughs> well, Patrick's replacing the battery for that. I think I will get started on this. Yeah, I noticed it was left on. <laughs> You all can tell that we're we're kind of not up to our full 100% selves here. We're not nobody's ill, but uh, you know because every because we're having such trouble in the Boston area too. We, we're getting to hit our well, and we're renovating the shops. So. And we're renovating. We're taking the time to renovate the shop. So we're hopeful that this is going to be over soon, and then we're going to be up and running. And that's only good for everybody that's watching, I'm sure. And I'm especially. I think that the upholstery business is both commercial and residential upholstery work. It's just going to be non-stop for many years after this. I really do. I think that the business is going to come back really, really well, plus all the other businesses. So I'm really hopeful. So I'm not going to show you this quite yet. I'll just show you that because the mic went off. I want to get back to my questions and answers here. And if you have any questions and answers live, that they always take first, first priority. So, I ran downstairs, put the compressor on, so I'm a little winded right now. That's pitiful, isn't it, you guys? All I did was run downstairs. My son runs. How many miles, Patrick? Can you run? Oof, not even know. Without really counting me playing soccer. Without catching a breath. Anyhow. So, um, on the a forum, on the a Broadway Upholstery School forum on Facebook, uh, we, have, we have a lot of activity, which I'm really happy about. And one in particular, John from Ireland, um, he he sent us a picture of a set of horses that he that he made that I think are beautiful. I think he's from Ireland. Is he the one from Ireland? I yes, think so. I think so. Yes, he is. He's an Irish last name, that's for sure. He's from Ireland, and um, he custom made these these horses. And I guess I wanted to make a couple of comments. He's got everything right. Um, the main thing I think are the, is the well, and also the the angle of the legs. Um, a lot of the store bought ones, the angles of the legs are too far out, they're too wide, so that you're always tripping over them. I mentioned this last week, but it's so important. It's so important to have like a three foot radius around your work, around the whole work. Uh, you see, this is up against the wall only for the, your benefit, but you normally uh, this bench would be moved over so that I'd have work all the way around the bench. Um, you know, it's funny when, when in the shop that I worked in, uh, when they hired me, they were looking for apprentices. Um, I, I didn't have many skills with the tools at that point, but what they were looking for more, and this is just a tip if anybody else out there is looking for a job in the upholstery industry, 
They're looking more for bench presence. I'll show you what I mean by that. Present the presence, bench presence, okay? So they're looking for somebody that, uh, you know, is careful when they're turning a piece over. So, um, you know, you have a piece like this that's partially finished. Let's say they'd give this to the person and they turn it over without checking the bench to make sure there's no staples or anything. So it, what, what, what you do is you just make sure that, and I do this even to this day, this is what I would do, you know, I wouldn't do it that slow, but I would make sure before I turned anything that there were no tacks or staples that had to be really clean, or, or better yet, maybe a piece of plastic underneath there on something that might pick up dirt. So those type of things. What, what the horses do, and I, Patrick has these up there now, but um, they actually give you, you know, when you're walking around, you see my horses, I'm not going to, uh, when I have a bench on top, the bench overhangs the horses, so I'm not going to, my feet aren't going to touch uh, anything or trip over anything, and my floor is nice and clean. So important. So, thank you, John, for sharing this. I will read what he says. He says, uh, not exactly the same as Kevin's, but I'm not a carpenter. I can see the benefits of these already for working on chairs and providing a base for tabletop workspace. Thanks again for the dimensions. That, we showed you the dimensions. If you want to see the dimensions or hear about the dimensions, that was last question and answer last week. So we actually have a question. Well, I'll uh, tell you who's checking in. Uh, Blum and you, I think it's checking in. Sandra's checking in. Hi, Sandra. Uh, Shayla. Shayla. Ashdown. Ash. I think that might be John. They said it's from Ireland. Yeah, that is John. That's John. Ashdown Hi, John. John. Hi, John. Nice job. Nice job. I'll tell you live. Is Sam's there Sam's here and Jimmy's here. Jimmy Olson, yeah. uh, a fabulous uh, uh, apprentice, um, star of many uh, TV shows here at Upholstery on Broadway. That Jimmy? Yep. Oh, okay. Thanks for tuning in, Jimmy. And we have a question. Um, this is from Blue Mano. Blue Mano. Can't we somehow, as upholsters, use a strip fabric on a chair seat? So as to show a formula for cutting around back rails? Uh, I think she's trying to get, develop a pattern for, for cuts. And I think that that's probably almost impossible uh, because I think that there are too many variables. Um, and the variables are such um, um, fabric, some fabrics stretch more, um, some fabrics um, and, and all different types of cuts. I, I think the question is more like a slip cut. For slip covers, I think you might be able to do that because you're talking about fabric that's just on the surface. Does that make any sense? And I think, I hope I got your question right, uh, but I, I think the answer would be, I don't think you can make patterns for cuts because you're dealing with um, upholstered seats and flat seats too, you know, crown seats I mean, and flat seats, and, and there's this just too many variables. I believe. So if, if I answered your question, let, let me know. If I didn't, if, if you have a follow-up question to that, let me know. So just to finish up on John's, he said, uh, thanks again for the dimensions. It's 15 degree angle for the legs and not 22 as someone had suggested. Yeah, right. That's about right. Thanks, John. And we're really happy with Pam. Pam um, on, on the uh, Broadway Poultry School uh, Facebook page. Um, she's got some really cool uh, carpets that she used and, and um, I'm going to read to you what she says. She says, uh, finish this vintage rug ottoman bench today. Lots of math in uh, lots, L-O-T-S in capital letters, lots of math to determine size of frame to maximize rug so very little cutting was done. Finish the cuts around the legs with fray check and French nails. Now, from what I'm reading here, she actually made the dimensions to fit the to fit the material, or in this case, the rug, which is very unusual. Um, but that's interesting, and she did a, did a fantastic job. You guys are probably seeing that right now. Um, nice hardwood floor, by the way, too. There, but, but that's a that's a nice job. Wow, that is such a unique looking piece of furniture. She did a really good job with the tacks. So, um, Pam, you must have used a long shank French nail on that, right? I, I, I don't think a regular shank nail, French nail, would, would go into that. I think you would need a three-quarter inch shank on that. And I'm not sure if people are aware that there are two different sizes on the decorative tacks. 
but just the French tax. I don't think there's any other tack that, that has a long shank. All the other ones, like the, the Hammond, Oxford Hammond nails, the cat's eye nails, um, there's a few other ones. So what, there's actually a buffalo head nickel nail. Uh, all of those are, are smaller shanks that, that wouldn't work on this. So you have to keep that in mind, especially if you're consulting with a client, you're in a house and they want a different type of attack. You would have to say there's only one tack available for this, and that would be a long shank French natural nail, and that's probably what that is. So let's go to the next one. Okay, then we have some comments from YouTube. By the way, we, we, we surpassed, Patrick, what's the latest count of subscribers for you? 8,102. So did that slow down just a little bit? No, I mean, it actually went up. It did. Wow, yeah. that's great. So we always will say it now. If, if you guys haven't subscribed to the channel, please do. Um, and we have some special thing that we've never done coming up at 5 o'clock today, Patrick, the yep, premiere. Premiering. And um, we, we, we have try our hand at these face masks. I think they're really a good face mask. I think they provide good protection for people. Um, and uh, you guys maybe want to tune, tune into that. Um, so here we go. We got um, how to make double piping. Somebody commented on uh, just thanks so much. That's from Joseph. I'm not sure where Joseph is from. Joseph, though. that's the young kid who's my age. And he's learning or studying how to be an upholsterer. Is that it? Yeah, yeah. He has a lot of cool stuff. I checked out his Instagram. He actually has some. He did a motorcycle seat. I thought was really cool. Yeah. And he does a uh, he does an auto upholstery. Oh, cool he does. Stuff. Yeah. All right. Actually, that's that's pretty. You get pretty creative with automobile upholstery, and um, in automobile upholstery, you guys, I guess that there are three distinct upholstery uh, methods. One would be commercial, one would be residential, and one would be automobile. Um, I don't know many upholsters that do all three, um, but there might be some out there. Automobile upholstery, though, there's a lot of stitch work, and especially the custom automobile upholstery. A lot of stitching work, um, and they're not only doing seats; they're, they're doing uh, the, the, the dashboards, they're doing panel door panels. Um, I think they know how to do. They must do convertible tops, um, all that. A lot of stitching. So they're 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 probably on their machine 90% of the time, and then the other 10% of the time they're actually applying the, the material to the car. So it's interesting how that in residential upholstery. Uh, like this, it's mostly bench work, you know, with some sewing. Probably it's it's like 90% bench work and 10% sewing, or maybe 80, 20, something like that. But uh, and commercial work, um, commercial work is just you need more space. Um, it's more production line work, so you know you're going to be doing restaurants with you know 200 booths or 200 chairs, two or 300 chairs. So you set up more on an assembly line, you need more space for that. Um, it's a lot of uh, gluing um, application, it's, it's more st it's straight work, opposed to curvy work like this. Um, so I got off track a little bit there, but then, so we got one, uh, we had, um, so we like to, you know, we have comments sometimes that help us, they're, they're cr a little critical, but um, crit, our critics are, are welcome too because it helps us be better, right? But this is one of the early, early on YouTube uh, videos that we did, upholstering a sofa, part five. Um, and he, I think affectionately, this is British Pippi, Pippa. He says, oh Patrick, uh, audio is like chalk on a board, fantastic content though, and I'm using it as a refresher course as I studied over 18 or 19 years ago and have forgotten all the nuances of upholstery, especially pulling that double-ended needle through. Now that's interesting because it's the nuances that that really um, I think get lost in a lot of YouTube videos, no matter what people are doing on YouTube. The nuances are what you get with the one-on-one -on -one online classes at Broadway Upholstery School. Those, those you, you uh, those are where the highlight of the nuances, and I, I try to um, during during those shows point that out because um, so, sometimes they're so subtle, like what a nuance is, I guess, and, and you don't you might not see it or hear it, right? So I, I think I'm good at pointing those things out, um, and this is good though, you know, because uh, our audio and our visual 
has improved greatly since, uh, since some of the new, uh, older videos. And we were thinking about taking them down, some of the, some of the ones that we knew, you know, kind of goofy. So sometimes we did some goofy stuff because we were just having fun in the beginning. We do have fun now, but in the beginning it was a little goofy. But no, uh, we, we decided, I think somebody said, no, don't take the old ones down because they like to see uh, the, how, the, how we, we evolved. I think it, Erica said that. Uh, Erica said She's that. Thank now. you. Erica, thank you. Because I think when you see us evolve um, in the quality, um, I think that that's a nice thing. So we'll keep the old ones up there. <laughs> right, Patrick? Yes, thank you. Okay, so the next, is there any questions before I move on to the next? No, there's a comment. Do you want to you want to read the comment? Uh, this is from Tiana. She says, "I looked out with the big long uh, shank nails. Beginner's luck. I had these in my workshop from some old upholstery that I picked up at the vintage." So she did have the long shank nails. I suspected that. So. And actually, you almost need those with, um, I mean, she had a carpet, which you definitely needed them. But <coughs> um, some heavy fabrics, too, or a piece that's older and, and has been nailed before. Sometimes you have to go to the big attack if you don't want to put a, an effort into the wood, you know, fixing the wood. So um, isn't that, it was a good guess, wasn't it, Pam, that you had those? So it was a good you had those. You wouldn't have been able to do it otherwise. I'm trying to think how you would... How would you overcome that if you didn't have the long shank nails? Um, I guess you could have gone to just a braiding like a gimp, you know. You guys know what that is. Let me just grab it. You could have gone to the trim and glued it. It wouldn't look as nice. That actually would have been, wouldn't have been a bad color for your carpet, right? Wouldn't have looked as nice as the nails, but that would be one thing you could do. You, you certainly couldn't do a double piping with the rug, right? <laughs> Oh, put that over there. Uh, so, let's see. I actually like that, I like the critique on, I want to get back to British uh, Pippa. I like the critique, it was kind of like, when he said, oh, Patrick, he went, he got, it, it reads, oh, 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 So, so we knew that he was, he was, that's a, I like that. Instead of just coming out with a critical comment, he's kind of like affectionately saying, "Hey, you know, the, 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 it's like chalk the video, the audio." But that, that's good. And it was like chalk. It too. was. It actually was. I don't. I, I. I don't. I don't know the difference to be honest with you. But Patrick does. So thank you for that. Um, so we get back now to Robert on uh, how to apply leather in a drop-in C, and I think um, I think you might have just read this, Mikhail. I pra oh no. Robert says, this is good advice. He says he practices on the back corners and then hopefully the fronts are spot on. It's really a good point. Practice, right? Practice makes perfect. Um, so if you're doing a seat, um, the back corners are probably a good idea to get those first and then you know you get you get better at the other two, right? Yeah, I like that. Let's see. Waterfall skirt tips. Robert has said, first time ever seeing that process, it has possibilities. I could tell Robert is a young man because um, in the 90s, he wasn't around the 90s doing a pole. He might have been around the 90s, but he wasn't around doing upholstery in the 90s because in the 90s, that's when all the designers were going crazy over these waterfall skirts and everything was a waterfall skirt. So what it basically is, is it's, it's like a half slip cover, half upholstery. The in interior is upholstered like this. Although I have to tell you, I've never seen a waterfall skirt on a wing chair, which is this, what this is, but, but if you were doing a waterfall skirt, you'd have this upholstered, the wing would be upholstered, and then from here down would be like, a, like you would line a skirt, and then you would, you would put it up here, and then upholster it, tack it to here, and then leave it open with the pleat here, all the way down here, and a pleat all the way down here, a folded piece of fabric. So it, it, it it's a, huge this you eliminate what the, the thing about the design is what they liked about it is if it was going to have a regular skirt you'd have to have a piping around the whole chair like this and then have the skirt fall from the piping so it just gave it a clean look but it was it's very distinctive though very distinctive and a little little hard to do you know it, it's not it's not uh, it takes time it takes time more, more time than a straight skirt are we all set for questions 
Oh, yeah. Okay. So, um, Robert was impressed with that, I guess. Well, he didn't really comment on he says He says it has possibilities, so hopefully that's an idea for somebody out there. Maybe Pam could do something with that one. Okay, Janine. It's good to hear from her in one of these comments. Um, this video was repairing springs using home tools. Now, the reason I did this, I'll offer these tips once in a while, because I know that you know, a lot of people are just going on YouTube um, to find out how to do a quick fix, and we do have a, th that, those series of quick tips that we offer. But I try to show, if I can, how to use home tools, because I know everybody's not going to have a webbing stretcher, for instance, at home, or, or specialized upholstery tools. So let's see what she says. I'm not sure if she liked it or not. I, I'm always amazed that you are generous enough to make this type of video. I'm sure in the long term it will return to your business multiply. Well, that's great. I, I think as far as returning to the business, the goodwill that we generate throughout our YouTube videos has, has just opened and expanded our world. I mean, we have people looking in Saudi Arabia, uh, South America, Europe, uh, New Zealand, all over the world. And, and we're just thrilled that uh, our reach, we're a local upholstery shop, you know. We're here in, in uh, Massachusetts, you know. And, and, and we're, we're, we're projecting ourselves around the world. We, we think that that's wonderful. I mean, we have, how many, how many views, Patrick, now? I know over a million. I know it's over a million. 1.1 million. 1.1 million. I mean, I think that that's amazing. I know, and I, I will continue to do this. I can't say monetarily what, what that means, but I know that the goodwill, you know, money is in everything, right, guys? Especially we're finding out these days. Um, but the goodwill, I think, definitely has multiplied and come back to us. So we're, we're happy about that. Um, so Tom, now Tom's commenting on repairing springs. The same one, isn't that interesting, on the home tools. I, I have a feeling that Tom might have been able to fix something with his home tools. Um, but he says, amazing video, keep it up. So yeah, sure, we'll keep it up. Those type of comments do, and Janine's comment and all your comments, do keep us going and encourage us, and, and please do that. Um, so the next one is how, how to cut fabrics around post. And uh, this is from, oh, I think we just, we just read this. Oh, let me read this again, though, because I want to make sure I got this. Um, if you want that fabric to be even on both sides of the post, why not eyeball it first from the back? and strike a line in your mind on the fabric that is in, in the seat. So that is a lot how I do it, but for a beginner, um, now I wonder if Lou, I'm going to, I'm going to uh, make a suggestion here or give her an idea. Think about this, Now I've been teaching upholstery for, oh boy, 30, 30 of my 44 years I've been teaching upholstery. So. Um, early on, I, I, I actually, um, this is interesting, I, I said to a person, hey, cutting has always been the hardest part of upholstery, of beginning upholstery. It's, it's just such an unknown. Um, and I can tell that, uh, is it Blue Manu? Is that it? Blue Manu has, has a talent that she might, might not realize that not many people have. And that is that, and the artist will tell you that they have it. Um, they have this ability to put a picture in their mind. Um, for instance, on a piece of furniture, um, in, I can close my eyes and see this wing chair and see every part of the piece of furniture on my, on my bench and exactly what I have to do and all the cuts and everything, right, from A to Z. I can see it all. I can see the cushion being cut and everything else. And I thought that everybody thought that way, but that's not true. We're not, we're not, that's a, that's a blessing that I have. And it sounds like she has, or he has the same thing. So you have to come up with, and, and if somebody has that, that's a great explanation, by the way, that's a fantastic explanation or for, for, for some students. But I find for most students, the teaching that I do, I, I've learned to uh, adjust to uh, other people's abilities. And I think I get that from, for four years, I don't know if people know this about me, but for four years, I taught in a program for people with disabilities, and um, anything from head injuries to schizophrenia. 
and I I actually realized that's probably where I got a lot of my uh, skills at teaching and breaking down the steps. I mean, I can break down one step into ten if I have to, depending on the person. So, so the point is, we're all, we all know, we're all different types of learners out there. We're, we're all unique in that way. So the, the trick is to find, for, you know, when I have ten people and I'm teaching upholstery, I have to, I have to adjust to each person's um, teaching ability, you know, uh, learning ability. So I'm always, um, you know, you have, to, you have to turn on a dime sometimes, you know, and, and, and respect that. So this is a really intuitive, good question. I, I like this. I like this. Oh, comment. Anyhow, let's get on. I talk too much sometimes. Oh, and then, and then, um, then they replied on how to, they must have been, you know, looking at a lot of the videos on how to upholster a padding a chair. Same person says, great video. So, well, wonderful. Well, that covers those, and I just wanted to get to um, a couple of questions that come up. Sometimes I'll ask these questions come up in, in, the, in, in my career. Um, <clears throat> I think I already went through this, but what's the difference between a commercial and residential upholster? But I already went through that. But another one is, um, that this was what always got me. People used to ask me, who do, you, who do I think was the first upholsterer, the, the very first upholsterer? So I like... I, I tell the story of a Neanderthal, right? A Neanderthal hunter. He goes out and, and he skins a, a huge uh, woolen mammal, let's say, and he, he takes the skin home to, 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 his, uh, to his girlfriend, and, and there's a boulder in the middle of the cave, and, and he, throws the, he throws the woolen uh, you know, skin over the boulder. Well, there's the first upholsterer, <laughs> I guess. Um, so that's, that's, that's my theory, anyhow. So. Are there any other questions? Okay, let's say I'm going to get going on this chair. I'm, actually, you know what? Let's give Jimmy a call now. Let's give. It's a little early, but hopefully he's available. And I'm, I'm kind of anxious to talk to Jimmy to see how he's doing. Um, for those of you who don't know Jimmy, he's one of our stars in, in the one-on-one uh, -on -one classes at Broadway Upholstery School. There is a comment. We have a comment. Hi, Erica. She says, I think she's replying. Yeah. Uh, eyeing the posts from the back to make the cuts. That's what my husband said too after watching your video. He drew me a diagram as well, and the cut came out perfectly. Good. He was, a, he was a math major. Good. And she also says, You're an awesome teacher, Kevin. So, <laughs> so clear and methodic. Thank you, Eric. I appreciate that. So I just, I will tell you a funny story about um, an engineer I had working. Um, engineers and mathematicians. Mathematicians, I have a friend that's a Bernice who does the uh, slipcover classes coming up. It's interesting. She's a mathematician and, and she um, is a fabulous slipcover person. So maybe there's something there. But I had an engineer in one of my classes. So the cutting gets, it gets everybody stumped. And, and he, he was having a hard time with the cutting on a particular chair. And he, he said, I'm trying to explain to him. And I, I have to say, I, I think I failed explaining to an engineer. Because I think I just kind of like, uh, I figured he's going to get this really easy. And I think I, I, I let my guard down a little bit because of that knowledge. But anyhow, he was getting frustrated. So I didn't really, I wasn't really, you know, giving him what he needed. But he, he felt like he could do it on his own. But anyhow. So um, he had an upholstered chair, an upholstered seat, and, and it, the back was upholstered on it, and he was redoing just the seat at this point, because that's how I do it. I do one step at a time, and the seat's the first thing, and then the inside arms and the inside back. So I was explaining to him about the cuts on his fabric. He's putting his fabric on and telling him what to do, and he was saying, you know, so counterintuitive. That's the word. I'll never forget those two words, counterintuitive, that he used about cutting. And it is, when you think about it. So anyhow, uh, so I explained to him again, I walk away and I come back. He had taken off the, this reminded me of it, your husband, from the back of the chair. Because <laughs> when we're trained in upholstery, we, we're trained to always look at the chair from the front. No matter how easy it might be to go around the back and make a cut, always from the front of the chair. Okay, because that's how the customer's going to see it, right? And, abo and above eye level. You know? So anyhow, I come back and this engineer has got the entire back off and his head he's got his head through 
the chair, the back of the chair, looking down at what I'm trying to what I'm trying to explain to him is the funniest thing. So I, I, I said, okay, I have to focus here. So I, I, I spent more time with him, and he finally, I think, got it. But um, that, that was funny. Anyhow, let's give Jimmy a call. Uh, he's hopefully on, uh, he's on call here. We'll put it on speakerphone. I don't know if people can hear this. Is it? Oh, there it is. Evan, is that you? Uh, Jimmy, Jimmy, it's me. Can you hear me? Yeah, I, I'm in the state of confusion that you're in. Right. Are you in your trailer? We got Jimmy a trailer for stardom. Yeah, stardom, right. Okay, can you fix that door? I said, you know, I mean, I don't know what you can do with being a handyman that you are. But... Well, if one of your diva fits, when you were closing the door, your gold star fell off onto the ground. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're calling to see, uh, say hello and see how you're doing in this pandemic. Are you, are you keeping busy, Jimmy? I am trying to keep busy. It's, you know what, it's uh, like a lot of other people, I'm sure, you clean the house and you say, oh, let me do this project, and okay, that's done, oh, let me go on to something else. But after a while, you want to kind of, you want to break things up, and it's, it's tough when you're not going to a restaurant or, yeah. you know, to the local coffee shop in the morning and see your friends. I mean, it's really... It is. I mean, when, great, thank God for social media being as it is, because otherwise I think people would go, like, totally crazy. Well, you know, I find you as a right a right brain gentleman, right? A right, you use your right brain a lot, like I do. And I, I find that... These idle times are very difficult for people who are so used to living in their right brain world, which, you know, the creative side. I, what are you doing uh, to find, uh, other than upholstery, uh, creative things to do? Uh, do uh, what are you doing? Uh, well, right now I am doing a curio cabinet uh, that was from my mother's house. I'm refinishing that. Oh, nice. Yeah, so I think actually what I'll do, I, I actually took some pictures of it. Uh, now that it's stripped down, uh, what I'll do is I'll take some pictures as I go along. And that's one of my problems is that I tend to think of taking the pictures after the fact when everything's you know, <laughs> yeah. finished up and it's like, wow, this looks great. Oh, damn, I should have taken a picture of it. Actually, I'll, I'll talk to the audience. That's a good point. Jimmy, if you guys are building a portfolio, especially for your work at home like Pam, or somebody, she's already doing a good job, isn't she, Pam? She's doing a good job at documenting. I am, I am so jealous of Pam. I would, I would love to hang with her because uh, I'll tell you, I wish we could get her on, Kevin. Well, she, 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 she comments a lot, and, and yeah, she would be, she would be terrific. She just had a, I don't know if you saw the forum recently. She, she upholstered a bench in a, in a rug, an Oriental rug. Did you see that? Yes, I did. I got, every time I go to the go to the website, and I check out the, you know the upholstery of Broadway, and she's there. I said, "Oh my God, what is this woman up to now?" She's um, she's unbelievable. She, she does fantastic work. Unbelievable. A lot she of people. Uh, I, we have some really good, talented people out there, don't we? Including yourself. So, Jimmy, I had a question. If you if you found things to do, uh, I find that um, I think all of us can use a little bit of that right brain, no matter what what walk of life you are, you know? What do you think? Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, you want to keep busy. I mean, you're used to, I know an awful lot of people are probably baking night and day yeah. and cooking night and day, and that's a great thing to do. Right. Um, but I think, I think sometimes uh, for yourself, it should be, you know, arts and crafts, whether it's needlepoint, knitting, crochet, refinishing, uh, you know, anything like that. I mean, I think it's important. Gardening, maybe, and things like that yeah. uh, fall into the well, same. Even well, trying to trying to get in and out of a Home Depot today is, is like almost an act of God for my life. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. You know, I heard somebody had told me that you have to uh, have your temperature taken. Really? And that, yes, you have to have your temperature taken. This particular person told me this. Uh, wow. You have to give your name. And uh, I think you have to have a mask and gloves too while you're there. Wow. I don't know what that. I was at Lowe's the other day. I walked in and out. <laughs> well, Lowe's is different, yeah. I guess. Uh, I guess they're, 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 their rules aren't as stringent as the Home Depot. <laughs> well, this is, this is what this woman told me. And I said, really? 
I said, well, oh. I haven't been there in a while, but I, I, I'm not sure if they're doing the um, number count, if they're only allowing so many people in the store at a time or not. You know, it just dawns on me, Jimmy, if they were taking temperatures at the at an Elvis Presley contest, uh, con, uh, I can't, <laughs> I can't get this out without laughing. But I mean, you know, some of these girls really loved Elvis, right? So they, what yeah. if they would take their temperatures? Nobody would get in. Well, nobody would get into the, and the Beatles. Beatles too. What? Yes. The Beatles too. The Beatles too. They were fainting outside of the outside of the concerts, right? Yeah, it was just yeah, it was overwhelming, Kevin. But not for you and I, baby. It's like what? No, okay. no, no, no. I, do they do they give penalty for be having too low of a temperature, Jimmy? I don't know. I, I, I didn't take that class. <laughs> you can. Oh, all right. We'll just take Jimmy's temperature when he comes back. And do oh his yeah, class. we're gonna have to put you through a stringent uh, these, these stringent rules. We need you to uh, take your temperature. What else? The we'll X-ray machine at the airport. The X-ray machine. The, uh, we do have one of those set up for you. Uh, <laughs> That's your son speaking. I'll take it. He's got to take care of you, he said. Well, we miss you a lot. And uh, we're going to ask you. You know what? I, I, every so, I, I have the fabric in my apartment, Kevin, and I kind of say, God, I, I, I can't wait for hopefully this um, uh, thing to be over. Yeah. At least be lifted a little bit. And I, I'm sure people will be very um, aware of uh, what's going on around them and, and hopefully to. Uh, you know, take care of themselves, and as well as, you know, others around them, too, as well. So, I, I, you know, you just want everything to uh, get hopefully somewhat back to normal for, for, for what you might want to do. Yeah. Well, we, we can't wait to have you back here to finish up uh, that project that you were working on, and then... Yeah. Um, we're still going to continue this the idea we had about going around looking for furniture and then telling stories through the various projects over the years that we've done uh, that have been the interesting projects that we've come across. Um, yeah. You know, so we can't wait to get you back in here. So, do you have any other comments or, or, or suggestions or? Um, no, I mean I think you know we spoke about trying to find the projects that might. Um, you know, be a good project to kind of do a probably a quick, quick fix job and, and sell it for whatever we want to do. Mm -hmm. You know, give the money to uh, charity or whatever it's going to be. Yeah. And um, I know I think that you and I will probably be glad when uh, you go back to the Lexington uh, Center and oh, yeah. get class to start it up with that too as well. So you'll be a, you'll be a busy man hopefully in a few weeks. Well, we were telling people that we think that we think that when we get through this, and we will. I I think. Um, you know, I'll, I'll say it now, uh, Dr. Fushi, I love that guy, he's, he's a great man, and, and he says, mm -hmm. it's not going to go off like a light switch. I actually think, and not to contradict him, but I do think it's going to go off like a switch like that. I, I think it's going to go as fast as it came, and we'll be wondering what happened, and it's going to be very soon. Well, let's hope. Let's well, hope. I, I would hope know? so. That's a good hope, but they're going to hope. If it, if it stays this way, and... Uh, still end up having the virus uh, down the road even through the summer and, and into the fall um, you're going to see an awful lot of problems with uh, the economy definitely the economy has taken a hit yeah I think it's going to be lasting longer throughout the summer I mean people are saying god I, I'll be glad when I can take a summer vacation and uh, you know kids yes they're they're uh, still out of school but it's like I think they most kids would like to get back to it just to get back into a routine. Well, I think one thing that's comforting that we all should remember is that we're all we're all in this together. The whole world is in this together. Yeah. I mean, uh, and there's some comfort to that knowing that that, that that we're all in the same struggle, right? Yeah, exactly. I mean, uh, you know, you, you don't want to see anybody fall ill and you, you want to try to do anything you can to help them. And Glad we're on the same boat because I got some bad news. Your trailer was repossessed. Your your, your trailer that we have. <laughs> but Operation <laughs> Repo. Operation <laughs> Repo. Okay, and they took your trailer. That works. I'm gonna do that. Operation Repo. Operation Repo. Right. <laughs> It was on bricks. It was on the bricks. The already stolen. <laughs> we just couldn't keep up the payments, Jimmy. Yeah, I know. What was it, all $5 a month? Or maybe you got to catch you up on your comments. Though. Wait a minute, Jimmy. Hang on the phone because we got a couple of comments. They might, it might be one of your fans. Hold on. I was going to catch up. So, um, okay. oh, hi, 
checked in. They fi they finally caught us live, so that's good. Oh, good. Hello. That was good so people can catch us. And um, Pam will follow up on that. So uh, when you and Jimmy were asking what she did and why she's right. doing really good, so she said, I left my corporate job in December to start a new creative home furniture and decor business. Wow. She's doing it for business. Wow, and, uh, kind of tough to start at this point in time, but she's a stockpile of projects. Hold on a second. Finish so that good. up. Jimmy's got a question for Pam, but go ahead. But she's it. a stockpile of projects. That's good. So keep posting them for us. We keep featuring them. So she's got a stockpile of projects, but she, Jimmy wants to know if Pam would be willing if she's going to have, if she have a business for sale, these for sale, these items, or do we I'm know that? Not sure. She can, maybe she can post that on the forum. Post it, forum. Pam, if you want. If you if you do, we'll be happy to, you know, Sometimes sponsor questions you. questions get lost on. Yeah, YouTube, you so can mention your business. And we, we don't care about that, do we, Pam? On the forum, yeah, it's fine. On the okay. forum, you can do that. And, and Jimmy wants to know uh, where you're out from. Do, do we know where she's from? Mass. Massachusetts. One of them, maybe it was Terry. One of them's from Mass. Well, know, Pam, maybe Mass. Pam can let us, if she wants, let us know. But Jimmy, Jimmy's got a motive. You, maybe you want to buy that, uh, you want to buy something from her that you've seen on there. Is that right, Jimmy? No, well, I'll tell you, she does some classy work, Kevin. I'll tell you, she is. That would be, she, if you could get her on the show. Oh, that, that would, would be, be nice. Yeah. Well, we, yeah. we, we have a waiting list for our, our, our audience. Um, you know, and, and for some reason, you get you keep out of the massive audience we have. For some reason, when you keep getting picked as the person from the audience that comes up to talk to us, is that? Yeah, well, you have a you have a very quiet crowd. Here, right? <laughs> they're, almost, they're almost like a like a batch of uh, a batch of nuns. You Did you say crickets? Nuns. Crickets. <laughs> Pam from uh, Westboro. Pam is from Westboro. Oh well, I'm a, I'm in Waltham, so I mean it's. Uh... You know, it's a little bit of a ride, but I mean, she's. A, I, I wish her well with her business. It's it's great. Yeah, I do too. I think it's I think it's great. Yeah. She's a fan of ours. You know, she's gonna go you a long way. If we if we can't bring she can't bring the show to you, we should go to her and have a good time with that. I, I think well, you know, in the something. in our future, we we've been. People have invited us. I, I don't know if it was John from Ireland or another person from Ireland invited us over there. Um, and people have pe people do that. We could run seminars, and you know, at some point, we would love to be able to do that. Just like travel this country, and may maybe expand it from there. You know, um, when things well, get better. I travel really well alone, Kevin. If you really want to know. You travel well. <laughs> well, you know, I don't know if we we don't want to put a hitch on our, our van with the trailer. I think that that would be kind of lugging lugging along there. You know. Yeah, well, yeah, exactly. That, that trail with no tires is not going to get good money. <laughs> Maybe things will get better and we can get that back for you, Jimmy. But hold on a second. Yeah, yeah, sure. Because yeah. I want to ask if there are any more questions here. And then, um, no? Jimmy, I'm going to start. If you're going to. Oh, hold on a second. Pam? Pam's from I, I, Westboro. Yeah. Westboro. Yeah, we. we yeah. Okay. So, Jimmy, uh, we're going to be closing up. I'm going to maybe do a little work on this. Do you see this wing chair up here? How far behind? Is, am I in real time? I'm lifting my hand up now. Do you see it? No, he's going to lie. I'm messages, but I can't get through to you. Oh, you can't uh, see that? You're not on YouTube? Uh, yeah, well, I, I can't. I, I'm trying to do both, and I am yeah, kind of getting backed up here with pages. Yeah. Oh, okay. So, All right. Well, I just yeah, wanted to see. Um, what type of time difference is there, Patrick, on the, on the YouTube? Uh, I don't know. Oh, I got you now. Okay. Five seconds away. Jimmy, Jimmy. I'm gonna raise my hand in real time talking to you. Did you see my hand go up and then down? Yeah. Right? Was that <laughs> Probably from the last time. Jimmy, did you see that? Yes. Yeah, that was the most exercise you've had all the day. That's <laughs> thanks a lot. Hey, that was five calories, man. Okay, the next I think it was about two and a half. Two and a half. Who's counting? You should talk. Yeah, wow, that's really fast for you. All right, well, now you're picking on me. I have to leave now. <laughs> okay, Kevin, you're going to have a good day, and Patrick's and everyone's there. I say hi. Uh, Thank you, Jimmy. Thanks, Hopefully Jimmy. Hopefully we'll see you soon. Hey, right, take uh, it easy. Stay, yeah. Hey, stay well. Are you two for now? All right, bye. Bye. Oh, thank God he's gone. <laughs> Just kidding. We like to have fun with Jimmy, so I'm going to do a little work on this wing chair, I think. Let me just see what time it is. How much time do we have, Patrick? Um, so we just about a couple of minutes. minutes. 15 minutes? 20, yeah. Okay, well, I did want to get the piping on this. This, I have to tell you guys, this is a very challenging fabric. 
Um, no, not I was going to say, uh, John says, you guys can fly over and send Jimmy by boat. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Actually, you know, John, I, I have posted, um, I have posted a piece uh, for a tugboat here in Boston Harbor, speaking of boats. I have two boat stories. One, um, I guess three, technically the third one isn't such a boat story, but it, it was in the sea. But I did work on a tugboat for upholstery, and I did work on a yacht that I had to upholster a striped piece of furniture on a yacht. And let me tell you something, I never knew I could get seasick, or I got seasick doing this, and the stripes were a little wavy. <laughs> And I guess the other one was a love seat that had been, that's just going to be a story for another time, but a love seat that had been taken out to sea, was out to sea for three days and then got washed up on shore and then recovered. But um, it's funny you should say that. So, so this is a very thin fabric, which has been challenging for me. And sometimes when you, if you guys have piping it's wrapped around tight, I'm going to give you a little tip here. It's wrapped around the roll, right? Really tight. And no matter how much you pull it, right, for most fabrics, it doesn't matter, right? Most fabrics that you use, towards the end of the roll, it's, it's even a little bit more curvy, like this one is. So I had to use the end of the roll for my, my piping. And I still see that there's a favored, that it's favored uh, a one way. You see that, you guys? Which was a real advantage for my arms. Look at this. So what I did was I picked the curve going this way for this arm, and I picked the curve going this way for this arm. I, I didn't want to fight. In other words, I didn't do this. I didn't want the, the welting to fight. This is such a thin fabric, you guys. This was a really hard job. Um, so another tip. On, on a heavier fabric, you can actually sew the whole thing. On a lighter weight fabric, and, and with, the, with the curved arm like this, um, what I did was I just sewed the panel to this portion of the piping and the arm right here. And then I left, the, I left the panel long this way and this way. And I left this open so that I was able to pull this really tight and staple, pull this really tight and staple, and then I'm going to hand stitch this down like this and then join, join the piping over here. I'd say on a scale of 1 to 10 difficulty, being 10 is the most difficult, this would be about a 9 or a 10. But I think it came out really good and really happy with it. So I'm about to put the wing on, so I wanted to show you. I'm going to do the same thing. Why, why would I put, you know, in other words, I'm using this to my advantage, this, this piping that curved, right, curled on me. And I'm going to go this way, right? So one, I guess one good thing about a lightweight fabric is I don't have to cut the piping out of the back here like I normally would on a heavy fabric. I'll show you what I mean in a minute. So I'm just going to get this stapled here. And then look, I can just staple this down. Oftentimes you have to cut the pipe, the cording out, and just have the fabric come around. So I guess that's one advantage to this fabric, but it's, it's probably the only one that I can pick up. And then, you know, notice how it wants to, wants to wrinkle up. So I'm going to undo the wrinkles, and I've got a feeling for the edge of the wood, and I'm stapling. Really feeling for the edge of the wood. Come down here. Feeling for the edge of the wood, and I'm putting the piping right at the edge. The outer portion of the pipe, piping with the edge of the wood. Sometimes on the bottom of seats, the piping comes out a little bit just to highlight the piping. But on this here, I'm even with the wood. Okay, then I have a curve that it's going to fight now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put little cuts in there just to kind of get it to snake around there a little bit better. Jimmy's funny, isn't he? I, I, I love talking to him. He, he's got stories like you wouldn't believe. So. So what's going to happen here is the arm's going to come this way. So this piping's just going to kind of disappear into the arm. So I'm just going to end it right there, right? And I'm going to save this piping, this extra piping for the front here. Okay, so I guess now I'm going to show you how I go about the uh, putting the ply grip on. And I got a piece already cut here. 
So, I never start with, with, with the point like that. So I use, unfortunately you guys, I do use my, uh, somebody said, why doesn't he use another pair of scissors? You know, I might do that, because these are my good scissors. I'm going to use another pair of scissors to cut this with. Okay, but what I want to show you how I cut this. Okay, I'm going to, I'm going to make a little curve at the end there so that um, I can put my finger on that and not get cut, right? If you leave this portion of the ply grip, that will actually go right through this fabric. So you have to be careful. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go right to the edge of the chair, right the wing, and I'm going to start stapling there, okay? And so, a ply grip was originally made. When it was originally made, it was made for tax, for six ounce tax specifically. That's what those holes are there for. And then we started using the staple gun, but they never changed it. I don't know how they would. If, if they were going to change it for staple, maybe they'd have two holes in there. I don't know. But they never changed it because we got used to, as upholsters, we got used to using the staple gun with just the one hole. So there's the history of ply grip. So now I'm going to come over to the edge, the corner, and I'm going to softly, I'm coming about five, five prongs, five holes or six holes, softly bringing it around. And then what I do is I continue all the way down. I'm going to go back. I'm on a roll now, so I'll just go. Keep going all the way down, like every five or six. Now, so that didn't take. See this there, you guys? I wasn't following my line of the wood, so I'm gonna bring it in a little bit. Any more questions? I'm going to show you how to, uh, if you run out of ply grip, which I did there, I'm going to show you how to piece, piece on. You want to make sure that you round this off a little bit. We're going to get another piece. So if you're short, you could just add another piece, another little piece in there. this way so what you want to do is you want to make sure you cut above that with the ply grip. You don't want ply grip underneath that underneath this seam for your arm. Then I'm going to cut this a little bit. So we're prepping this to be a pulse, right? I'm going to show you another little tip. Then I go back and I fill in. See what I'm doing with my thumb, you guys? I'm not just stapling like this. A question. My thumb, actually, I'll, I'll get that question in a minute. My thumb is keeping the ply grip edge even with the welting, right? Okay, because if you don't hold your thumb there, it'll slip, and then you, and then it, it, just a little bit of space, you'll you'll see. Okay, so we have a question. Uh, the question is, why do you use ply grip? Why do I use ply grip opposed to hand stitching? Probably is the question, right? So the only alternative to ply gripping is hand stitching. And if I'm doing a museum quality piece, I would have to hand stitch it. But most upholsters need to speed up a little bit, and this is a way. This is a way to speed up. So if we we're hand stitching this, we'd have a piece of cardboard in here rather than this, and then we have to dress it up with our a stretcher fabric and then cotton, and then hand stitched. That takes a lot of time. So this just to speeds us up a little bit. And it, it makes, it, I'm glad I don't have to hand stitch this particular fabric because it would show so many puckers. Even, even if I'm really good, it would show really, puckers, are, you know, little flaws are okay when you're hand stitching, but not puckers. And that, this would pucker, and I wouldn't like it very much. So now I'm gonna do is close this up about halfway, not all the way, because you have to slip your fabric in there. And I wanna show you another thing. 
uh, just close this all the way up. Okay, so I have a super, I, I fill right in here. See, so another thing that I do, you guys, I don't trust my eyes at all. You have to be, my, my fingers can attest to the fact uh, that, you know, I've been upholstering a long time, so I have calluses on calluses, but what I do is, with my hand, first of all, I just run it along inside here to make sure I see a staple that's sticking up here. It's going to knock that down. One, another, you know, this has been checked a few times too, and I just found some. I got some loose staples here too. Wow. So we have to grab those. Not good, especially on a thin fabric, right, guys? And then knock this down, knock this down. And then I'm going to go back. What I felt down here, I felt a piece of the ply grip coming up. So I'm just going to hammer that down. So, um, and even sometimes I'll just run my fingers along here. Be very careful. Do not run your fingers up top. You'll get cut. This is very sharp before it's actually knocked all the way down. I'm going to show you another trick, and then we're going to probably close out. So on a thin, on a thick fabric, you don't have to worry about this. You can just, this is ready to be uh, upholstered. But on a thin fabric, it's a good idea to take some masking tape, especially on your ends. And what, what you want to do is you just want the masking tape to come over the edge of the wire, but not over the prongs. The prongs still have to be doing their job for the fabric. But now I've protected this edge, okay? And I'm going to do the same thing down here, right? This, this, this fabric's like a rice paper. It's really thin. Beautiful fabric. Prints are beautiful, but they're thin. And then I'm going to take a little piece in here. See around this, around the curve sometimes? Your edges show a little bit more. Your, your pointed edges show a little bit more. So I'm going to take this. And I'm just going to get in there. You don't want to go in too far. Like I said, you don't want to cover the prongs. There we go. Beautiful. So there you go, you guys. And I'm, it, unless there are any more questions, Michaela? Comments? Okay. So we're going to say goodbye. We thank our guest, Jimmy, um, for joining us, and especially you guys at home who, who tune in and, and support us through the YouTube channel and also the online classes. We thank you, and we hope to see you next week. Tune in. Thank you. We'll see you later. Bye.